Hey everybody, Ryan from The Lone Ranger here. I've got a really cool bike review for you guys, plus a little something extra. I'm actually reviewing the 2018 Pivot Mach 6 Carbon, which is a bit of a unicorn right now for bikes out there. There's been no other reviews on this bike. Um, and then mixed in with the review, we're also gonna do a factory tour of kind of the home base uh, in Phoenix, Arizona with Brian, the national sales manager. So I was able to ride it for three solid days and I wrote everything from like fast bomber kind of runs to like sketchy sandy stuff to janky rock stairs and everything in between. So I really feel like I got a pretty good handle of this bike and uh, I'm gonna share some thoughts with you on that. But let's go uh, get set up with the bike. Let's give it a shot. I'll tell you a little bit about myself as the rider so you can kind of get a feel for sizing. I'm six foot one. Um, my limbs aren't especially short or especially long. I'm about 187 pounds with riding gear on. And uh, so yeah, so I went for a size XL on this, which normally I would, would not do. Normally I would get a size large. And so, but the reason why I went with XL for the Mach 6 is because when I first got there, um, they had me onto a Switchblade XL because that's all they had at the time. And it fit really well and I enjoyed it a lot, that extra reach in the top tube. So when it, when it came time to switch over to the Mach 6, I went with the XL version of that as well and I'm really glad I did because it fits super well and there was no part of that XL sizing that was too big for my sort of like medium tallish sort of frame. <laughs> That's funny. Putting that suspension to work right away. Yeah. This is about as chunky and tacky as it gets. Uh, okay. So one thing I definitely noticed right away with the bike, if you are a water bottle style rider and not a pack rider like I am, um, I always prefer a bottle over a pack. So one thing I did notice is that with uh, there's not a ton of space if you have that extra reservoir in there. And so make sure you get a side mount water bottle with this frame. Um, it fits, it's fine but it is hard to get out because you have to kind of pull straight up. So definitely get a side mount water bottle and it should be, should be good for uh, the smaller size water bottle anyways. But it looks like if you didn't have the, the extra reservoir on there, you could fit a full size bottle, I think. I always forget that with Shimano, you can get two shifts for every push to the hard gears. Huh. It's kind of handy sometimes. All right. A little loose. So I've had some really great rides on this bike. Really different rides too. From like, kind of pedally cross country stuff like this to, uh, you know, full on high speed stuff. And it pedals super well. And seriously, for, six foot one dude or even six foot or whatever, the XL is really quite nice. Get that extra reach, extra stability. I don't feel stretched out at all on it. Whoa, right onto that rock. Also a really good test of these wheels. I'm running way too little pressure in these tires. I'm just trying to get as much grip as I can in this stuff. And I've pinged the ring, rim a couple of really good times. Still running totally straight and true. No flats, it's got Max, Maxxis DHF front and rear. I mean, this is a high-end bike, so the component spec, there is nothing that will really leave you wanting on this thing. For me personally, I would change out the grips. Um, they're a little thin for me and kind of giving me blisters like crazy. So I would swap them out for DMR death grips, the thick ones. Those seem to be really awesome for my hands anyways. This thing climbs super well. 
when I was first dropping off the switchblade back at Pivot and getting this one, the guys there said that this bike would climb just as good as a switchblade, and I had my doubts, but when I'm pedaling, I look down and there's no suspension movement. It's just super solid. <sighs> Me likey. Hello. Hey. All right, so part of the review, I would love to go and check out the back end of Pivot, see where everything happens. So Brian's gonna take us on a little tour. We're gonna walk around Pivot real quick, uh, show you guys what we do. And uh, this is just our little front room here, but yeah. uh, some bikes on display. Uh, that's Chloe Woodrow's bike that was racing the uh, Rio Olympics. The Olympics, uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, as well as, uh, you know, one of the bikes that you uh, might see racing on a World Cup. Uh, and the Mach 6 that you've been out demoing as yeah. well. Yeah. See, so. this is funny to me. Look at the gear ratio for an Olympic for an Olympic cross country bike, and then look at the gear ratio for like you and me. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly different. <laughs> Definitely climbing different things at different paces. So, uh, cool. Well, let's walk out to the warehouse and uh, show it. you some of the uh, assembly mm -hmm. that we're doing out here. Uh, so oh, these parts. These are these are offices. They're they're really amazing. Really like exciting you guys have stuff. Ever seen. Uh, offices before. Uh, hey, there we go. Yeah, so uh, this is our kind of our facility. These are bikes that are going out today. Yeah. Uh, so these are bikes that have been assembled so far today. Uh, and then back here uh, is kind of where all the magic happens. Yeah. So what you're looking at is uh, you're looking at. Uh, is this a complete bike in there? Yeah, it's a complete bike. That's tiny. On its way to Canada, actually. Sweet. Yeah. It's going to be some happy Canadians. There you go. Uh, <laughs> So what you see here is uh, we still do 100% of our assembly in the U.S. And so you're looking at the last stage in the line. Uh, so the line actually starts a little bit further down there. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, what they'll do is they'll pick the product, they'll place it on the line. Uh, my guys will uh, go ahead and they'll color match the decals uh, to the graphics, to the, to the frame. Yeah. Uh, they will uh, mount tires, cassettes, uh, cut brake lines to length, and then they'll move it a little bit further down the line. Uh, at that point, uh, the guys will push the bottom brackets, route the brake lines internally, cool. and all that fun stuff. Uh, we use these jigs uh, to place the forks to make sure that the graphics go on straight every time. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a little bit of what we do. And so they come in, they get put on the shelf, they start with basically just pieces. Yeah. Uh, and then they'll just move right down the line uh, and then straight out the door. So cool. I had no idea that you guys did that much of the assembly that's yeah cool. i mean there's no shock on the bike when we get it so we're mounting shocks yeah. uh custom matching the decals on the forks uh on the rear wheel or yeah. on the wheels in general uh we're doing uh cassettes we're doing bottom brackets we're doing brake lines all of that's done in-house here before we send it out and we were we were kind of mentioning before as we were walking before like that's such a good final final check yep for anything that could go wrong because you guys are really you have your hands all over that bike yeah, even well, and, and I mean, even to get to this stage before we'll even put them in inventory, we've actually gone through a full QC process once yeah, they yeah. land here. And our QC, our QC is around the corner, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll see that in a second here. We, we try to touch it multiple times. The more hands that see it, the better. Uh, <laughs> the day before Thanksgiving, so uh, yeah. we've got some mascots today. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll go into things. the development area and uh, basically stop uh, filming, and then uh, I'll show you. Uh, you okay. can see it. So you want me to stop now? Stop now. This is a carbon mold. Yeah, so this is a carbon mold. This is our old 5.7 carbon. Uh, yeah. So uh, one of our first carbon bikes. Uh, it's not often you see one in the States because they're really giant paperweights unless they're being used. Yeah. Uh, so you can see areas here where, where this is where your tubes would come in to be able to get inside the frame and inflate your bladders. Uh, lots of moving pieces here, uh, little taps so you know where to drill your water bottle oh, cage yeah. bolts. Yeah. Uh, and so this thing is a tank. I mean, they bring this thing in on a forklift. Uh, I mean, literally it's, yeah, you can't, yeah, it doesn't Holy. move. Uh, you see the bottom you pieces can't. there as well. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, uh, actually technically those are the top, right? So, so uh, the pressure in there must be pretty immense, right? Yeah, and well, and heat too. So I heat. Mean, you heat them up quite a bit. Uh, and then uh, when they come apart, you know, they've pushed some resin through and they're basically done and cured at that point. And yeah. you can see the hammer marks from the years of using this, of hammering the, you know, the two molds apart at that point. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's what wow. a carbon mold looks like. That's uh, cool. For I, those who haven't I seen can't one. even believe how heavy it is. Like you can't, like it doesn't even like rock, like you can't budget. No, you can move it, but it's it hurts. Yeah. Yeah. This right here, that's their uh, warranty department. That's our warranty department. And their warranty guy's been off for a couple of days. So yep. with how big Pivot is, look how little bikes there are in the warranty section. That is 
absolutely crazy. Yeah, uh, and so, so this is our quality. These guys who are not, who, you know, it's holidays right now, we yeah. don't have any bikes in for QC, but this is every bike that comes here who receives a really comprehensive quality control check, yeah. start to finish. Uh, our tolerances are incredibly tight. Uh, like if, we, if I were to show you our go, no go gauges, which we make here, um, the, the difference is uh, about 0 0.05 millimeters between pass and fail, wow. um, which equates to, uh, for the Americans watching, it's one two thousandth of an inch is our pass fail. South Mountain is right in your backyard, quite literally, 10 minutes. Literally, yeah, it's a five minute pedal or so from yeah. here. Yeah, so we, we put a lot of miles on South Mountain, yeah. uh, and which is a good, it's a good training ground. I'll say. <laughs> this is one of our welding tables. Uh, so this is a, a one of our original aluminum Mach 6s, but uh, just mocked up because we do all of the welding of our frames still in-house for our prototypes. Um, and so what you see here is pretty typical uh, for normal production with a few changes where we, we have this, uh, this piece here. It helps us to line up all the links uh, to make sure that the areas of the W link are really accurate because those are some of the most important bikes or pieces of the bike to make sure that the bikes going to react well. Yeah. Uh, so uh, our guys would actually come in and we'd weld this up and uh, get it out on the trail as a prototype and ride it around and check ride quality, change angles. Uh, the nice thing about using aluminum for prototypes is we can rapidly change angles, rapidly change reach, rapidly change all of those different things. Yeah. Uh, and so a lot of the bikes will go through five, six, seven different iterations before they ever make it to market. We'll do all that in aluminum before we start cutting, cutting carbon molds overall. Yeah, for sure. This is approximately an acre or something like that of new racks. Uh, that will be filled up here pretty quickly. All the extra espresso machines you have to buy now. Yeah, actually, Bill, uh, Bill, who's not here today, uh, uh, built that. Oh, really? Um, yeah, he made it. Uh, oh. So Bill, who, who's one of our product design guys, made that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see uh, this is where your frames and, and your tires, their house, and uh, they live here before they get picked and pulled, and then we start to put them it's in the gonna, production. It's going to grab a couple of those on the way out. <laughs> yeah. I it's might. only white stickers for... Uh, OE. OE, okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yellow is an aftermarket sticker and the yeah. white is an OE sticker. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. White looks so good though. I like the white. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the whole, that's pretty much the warehouse. That's great, man. Well, thank you very much for showing me around. No problem. I want to get some of your thoughts on the Mach 6 real quick too. Sure. So do uh, you want to walk out there? Or you want to? Yeah, let's just go out to yeah. the bike. Sounds like a plan. I mean, as far as like my thoughts on the bike, which is right there, by the way, I probably haven't even showed it yet. Um, <laughs> What I really, really liked about it and what I noticed about the Switchblade as well is that the, the frame is really stiff and there's really great suspension components on it. And so I found that because of the stiffness of the frame, I could point it where I needed to and it never went weird on me. And it kind of just let the suspension do its work. Yeah. Rather I, than I agree. Like fighting against each other, right? And that's actually one of the things that was upgraded uh, or updated with this version of the Mach 6. This is the third iteration of the Mach 6. And we yeah. did go to a new clevis design. Yeah. Uh, and this is the same clevis design that we use on the, the Firebird. Uh, and the Firebird up to that point was the stiffest bike we had made. So uh, <laughs> being able to add that uh, clevis, add it some extra stiffness, and as yeah. well as lengthening the reach, which really make it feel like we, we went down some pretty technical steep shoots today. Uh, and having that extra wheelbase through there is really incredible. Oh yeah. And, and helps kind of calm the bike uh, when it gets just a little bit hairy. Well, it, it and the Mach 6 got a lot longer from last year to this year. It's like, what's yeah. the was like 413 or something Yeah, like that? you're in, you're right there. Yeah, so it's it's quite a bit longer. Uh, like I'm 6'2", yeah. and I remember sitting on the extra large and thinking like, whoa, this is a really long bike. Yeah. Uh, which is, what is the reach on like the extra large? You know what? I'd have to look that it's up. It's like four, I think it's around 480 something. Yeah. I'll put it on the screen right now. now, which build is this? What was I riding? So this is our XT Pro a one by. So uh, it's it's a we kind of have three different levels. It's race, pro, and team. So pro is our our kind of mid level. It's kind of the high value uh, for the money type build. So yeah. you're gonna get factory series suspension. You're gonna get a really nice M1700 level wheel from DT Swiss yeah. uh, with a DT350 hub. And then we upgrade the star ratchet to be a 36 tooth. And so you you mm. actually get some really nice upgrades. And it does have the capacity on this as we were talking about on the trail uh you can upgrade the uh the wheels for thirteen hundred dollars retail uh and and that's a really nice upgrade to jump to the reynolds and the i9 hub yeah uh so this is kind of the best uh for uh for a lot of us here uh it's a really nice value uh for the money totally. uh, it's certainly not an inexpensive bike but i mean there's not much on that bike you could look at and say you know i'd really like to change that like last night when i was doing um national 
uh, mm -hmm. in the dark for the very first time riding down. That's it. a tough trail to do in I the hit, dark for the first time. I hit all the drops <laughs> yep. and most of waterfall other than that one little section that yep. I almost cleaned today. No, you have um, But there's no way I could do that unless I was on a bike that I was completely comfortable with. Yep. And uh, a lot of the numbers are similar to the bike that I rode all this past year, which is a rain, but then it extended it even further and um, more stiff and way lighter like a good three pounds lighter than the rain so i feel like i could throw it around yeah you're in an extra large my extra large built out to uh to 29 and a quarter pounds without pedals so and it's essentially this build with carbon wheels and yeah. uh, an xo one group uh nice. so yeah it's really light i mean it's 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 reasonable I and mean, we're riding extra larges for growing out loud. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it's reasonable to be building this bike in that 28 to 30 pound range pretty wow. much out of the box well, i really really enjoyed this bike um i think it's probably the most enjoyable kind of like enduro bike i'm i have ever ridden up to this point so yeah whoever is whoever's buying one of these is going to be a happy happy person a huge thank you to brian and for tristan uh for setting me up with that bike taking me on a ride kind of a last minute sort of a thing and showing me around the the headquarters there i i can't thank you guys enough for for helping me out with the bike and showing me around and being so generous with your time so what did I think about the bike? My final kind of thoughts. Well, I thought it had a really roomy cockpit. I really enjoy that on a bike. Um, the extra reach was, was super confidence inspiring, especially on the kind of trails that I was going into. Um, most people say it takes you a good year to really get used to the terrain out there. And I was just like thrown into the mix of it with a brand new bike. I know on, on lesser bikes, I would probably be a lot more tentative with, with my riding. So it played a part for sure. And so I really believe that a stiff frame with good quality suspension is going to equal a great handling bike. Um, and the DW Link suspension, I was, I'm always impressed with DW Link bikes with their pedaling platform and yet being supple on the hits. So some things that I noticed um, that maybe could be better, the Fox transfer post that was on at the 150 mil dropper, I couldn't get the post down all the way before uh, bottoming out in the, uh, the seat tube. I could have, if it wasn't a Fox transfer dropper, Fox transfer dropper itself has really, really long internals. And so I wasn't able to get it down all the way. And we're talking about like maybe a quarter of an inch for it being absolutely perfect for me. I mean, if your legs were any longer than mine, you wouldn't have had a problem. Um, but I feel like, you know, with a, any other type of dropper, especially if you look at like a bike yoke where the actual internal length is actually a fair amount shorter than the transfer, you could probably fit 160 mil maybe even 180 mil uh, dropper inside that XL frame. And in which case, um, somebody shorter than me could be on that frame, no problem. The bottle cage, definitely get a side mount bottle cage. And uh, if you have that piggyback shock on there anyways, uh, and you're gonna be going for a smaller size bottle, so keep that in mind. So it says on the website that they come with Max's High Roller 2s. Um, that's another kind of product that I know a lot of people love, but I just don't get along with very well. The tires that I had on my bike were the DHFs. Uh, the 2.5s, which I think is the perfect tire for basically any situation. So if you're like me, um, and I know I am, when you go to order the bike, I mean, if I were to order the bike, I would shoot him an email and say, hey guys, do you think you could swap out the, the HR2s for the DHFs? Maybe please ask really nicely, maybe they'll do it for you. I actually have no idea if they would or not, but uh, that would be my recommendation anyways. So who is this bike for? Uh, I think if you like aggressive trail riding, um, and uh, want a bike that can pedal extremely well for the amount of travel that it has, or in any amount, amount of travel, if you ask me, um, this is a really great bike for that, for that type of person. If you're the type of person that really uses your bike just as a winch to get to the top so you can go blasting down, um, I would say there are even better bikes for descending just for the pure geometry wise and suspension travel. Um, so like the Pivot Firebird, for example, um, that is a, you know, basically a downhill bike with a single crown fork. It's 170 mils of suspension. So, um, but yeah, I would say for all round riding and for a bike that you can ride on trails, like say here where I live in Edmonton, where it's kind of more cross country and but be able to take it to the mountains and just hammer that bike down the mountain, this is the one and you're gonna be happy in basically every single situation. So that's my review of the uh, Pivot Mach 6. Um, tell me what you think. Uh, have you ridden the bike before? If so, I wanna hear your thoughts down in the comments. Uh, got any other bikes that you'd like me to review? Uh, I love checking out new bikes all the time. So feel free to um, put any uh, bikes that you'd like to see reviewed down in the comments as well. If you wanna see a review of the Pivot Switchblade, you can click right over here. Um, if you wanna see a review of the Rocky Mountain Altitude, right over here. And if you wanna subscribe, well, yeah. Thanks guys.